This is the most awkward thing I've ever used. <laughs> Oh, I think I broke it. You what? I think. I think. How I broke it. How did you break it? it? I don't know. I was doing what you told me to do. Oh man, this is not gonna be good. We've got 50 mile an hour winds rolling through. Um, I had been hoping it would wait until 10 o'clock. It's not. That sucker is gonna go. It's got massive ground acres in, but it, it's a matter of time before that thing goes. The Igloo Coop, however, that thing is looking pretty sturdy over there. And as for the greenhouse, well, it, it's not looking too healthy over there either. Oh my gosh. Two disasters ready to explode. Uh. All right, first off, I apologize about the bad audio. The wind is gonna be howling, so I will walk through what we're gonna do really quick and then show you the highlights. All right, so we have our TYM 574. This is the first 50 hours fluid change. We're actually at 100 hours. It, uh, 50 went by really quick. And uh, we've been using it so much, it's just, just one of those things. So, um, she's been a trooper through it all, but we are gonna change all of her fluids. We're gonna change the oil on the TYM, the transmission hydraulic fluid on the TYM, and we're gonna change the gear lube that is in the front axle of this tractor. It probably would have been beneficial if I had brought the manual out with me, but it's been a hell of a day. <laughs> I'm just telling you straight up, we've got crazy storms blowing through as you can hear. And uh, I've had my greenhouse destroyed, um, my chicken canopy destroyed. And it's just, it's not, it's not looking pretty out there right now. So anyway, this is what we have for fluids. So we have the Traveler SAE 80W90 multi-purpose gear lube. Uh, pretty much we use this in most everything. So we've got um, a little over two gallons of that. This is what it's gonna take. So we've got our two gallon jug plus an extra little guy. And then <laughs> this is the other reason why it took me so long to change it is because they've been out of stock of this. So Tractor Supply sells this one and this is what uh, TYM recommended, I guess, from what I was reading online. Uh, so the Universal Premium Tractor Fluid Transmission Hydraulic. All right, so here we have the TYM. Another good thing to do is to clean the air filters on your TYM. Ah, <sighs> see, so here we have one of our fill valves for the, uh, for the axle. There is a drain plug right there. Uh, we also should go through and grease everything too. All right, so we have, um, here's the oil filter right here. And then the transmission hydraulic fluid is right here. So this is the hydraulic fluid filter. These are the filter numbers that you will need. You will not find the filter numbers on a brand new TYM tractor because they are painted over. Let's see and then of course we've got our transmission fluid check right here we'll go ahead and check that really quick I mean, it's clean as can be you can't even tell there's any fluid on there oh uh, i think that's where you fill it oh yeah definitely nice and black there oh this is actually already loosened yep so this is vented Transmission oil filler. It's kind of nice because they have grease nipples, drain holes, check holes, and furrow holes in this little uh, diagram. So that's pretty handy to have. I don't recall the New Holland having that in the manual, so that's nice. 
Uh, front axle oil filler hole is on the top, of course. Drain hole, there are two of them. I'm guessing that must be a check right over there. You see that yellow one right there? We're also going to open that up to vent it. I might need the funnel for that because I don't know if it's going to necessarily clear the tire and I don't want to be laying in a puddle of oil. So I'm going to double check the manual and just make sure that that's correct. Alright, so I have my half inch wrench. Yes, I do put my name on my tools. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course. All right, so we can definitely see that these are definitely on tight, um, just like you probably have heard. <sighs> so I'm gonna do a little bit of work to try and get these loosened. We'll be right back to save on battery power. So we're going to estimate that uh, we want this probably about half full, give or take, because that'll be ab about where the check valve is right here. Oh, man. Look at that. I should have just done that. <laughs> well, guys, okay, there's our check. Um, it definitely looks like it's probably a little bit low. So um, that you don't need to worry about. So don't even worry about that. That is a check valve. Fingers crossed. When I did the new Holland on this, it was, it was pretty crazy. Oh. Ah, uh, there's nothing coming out. It might be too cold. Oh, it is coming out. Okay. It is coming out very, very, very slowly. Very slowly. All right, Eric is back and he is now gonna work on doing the transmission oil while I finish draining the other plug on the front axle here. So you gotta break that guy out. It takes so. a seven eighths size socket. Seven eighths for the transmission. So normally we would like to stick five gallon buckets on here, but they won't fit with the, um, the, lower clearance. the back hole. I think this is the back hole. Oh yeah, it's bracing. the back hole bracing, you're right. So we're gonna have to <laughs> try not to overflow our containers. So what's your game plan? Because it's uh, obviously- We're gonna have to throw the plug back up in there really quick and get our hands nice and juicy. So it's a good thing uh, I'm gonna be videoing you on this, right? And then uh, switch buckets out, I guess. But Dude, why don't you just take my bucket really quick and... What one? The yellow one. The one that I'm using. Oh, yeah, I don't care. That's fine. Alright, you ready? Oh yeah, definitely gear lube. What? It's stinky. I don't even notice the smell. Eric doesn't like gear lube. I'm gonna buy him gear lube cologne. This is gonna be a mess, man. Like, I wish I had a camera on the front so I could see your face. Well, it's gonna be bad trying to put this plug back in. <sighs> well, I don't know what that is, but. Magnet? It's a magnet. Yeah, but look what's on the end of the magnet. It's a big hunk of metal. All right, you're gonna have to give me that back in a minute. Okay. Pull that piece of metal off there. There's a lot of metal on here, actually. All right, let me have it back. Ugh. I'm gonna have to try to plug this back up. Cause that's not, that and that's not gonna hold. Well, I don't know how much this holds, but. I wouldn't. <sighs> I would have just switched it really quick, but that's okay. 
That's why I grabbed a rag. All right, we're gonna have to dump this into one of those containers. All right, so let's stick this one underneath it in case your plug blows. Where are you going? I gotta pull this out and drain it. Oh. Can you grab me another rag? Yeah. Now they did have thread tape on here. Do you want to re-thread tape it? Like this? Yep. I'll let you do it because my hands are all nasty. Ah, uh, I always put it on backwards. So you wrap it the same way you tighten it. But I, my brain can't wrap around that idea. Right. So <laughs> I can't. If it tightens this way, you want your threads to stop going that way, or? Yeah. Yeah, so you want your thread end to go... So you want to wrap to the left. Because then that way when it stops, it's going to be wrap going it to the left. Wrap it counterclockwise. Like if you're looking at it like this, wrap it counterclockwise. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to break this guy loose. And Eric's got a nice little um, set up here for me to use. So, <laughs> let's see how well this one's going to break out. Alright, this is a much better setup right here. Alright, that makes a lot more sense. There's only one drain plug. I don't know, I think there's two. One on each side. It's a it's a hump pan. So this is a double hump oil pan and the bad thing guess where the drain plugs are at here under this plate for the back hole plate see how they put two access holes right here yeah they put two access holes for the drain plugs but they're off like an inch well, I'd like say the holes should have been up here so it's basically gonna hit that it's gonna hit the plate and go everywhere yeah no, a two-wheel drive tractor could only have one plug, but this is four-wheel drive and it has a drive shaft. The New Holland has got a hump oil pan too, two-sided. Right. Did you show them my makeshift funnel? Oh yeah. This is Eric's makeshift funnel, which was invented by Suzanne and then designed by Eric. A little notched out Coke Zero bottle. And we pushing. What are you talking about? Lefty-lefty. Tightening. You're going there. You have it. You're upset. What? I'm not sure how this is going to work. My face. That was a little late because I said... Yeah, well, I wasn't that quick at the draw. Okay. Oh, look at that funnel working like a champ. Oh. And you caught it just big enough that I could slide it to the side and get my hand in. So it'd definitely be better to do uh, if it weren't so dirty under here. A big chunk of mud. I wouldn't break that loose yet. I don't have this one in. Well, that's fine. I just broke it free so you can turn it with your fingers. Oh, but I can't see what I'm doing over here right now. Can you take this? enough. Where's that wrench? Okay. Do we have any rags that I can wipe this off with? It's got a ton of mud on it.
All right. Oil filter wrench number two. Let's see if she can break this one. This one's not as easy to use. This is the one that I know to use. There's not going to be much in there, trust me. Okie dokie. You gotta rub. Yeah. Alright, so we have to mate these two together. We have to uh, grab some oil and rub it on and gasket and all the fun parts in here. Because sometimes the steel, steel gets left on here and you don't notice. And then you just smash it in there. And it leaks. <laughs> I've done it before and it makes a mess. You fire it up, oil just goes spraying everywhere. Ah. No, we gotta do the hydraulic filter. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that might not go on. That's gonna be too big. Let's get the chain one. Man, I'm freezing. That's not gonna work. Whew. Don't blame it on me if you break it, though. Come on, filter, go. I think I see it moving. It's moving. It's moving. Keep going. It's moving. There it goes. There it is. See, it just needs to be a little bit closer. There it is. Even you struggled with that one. Well, I, I, I felt like you were just pretending like I so I wouldn't feel bad. No, I felt like that was gonna break, honestly. There's like not much. Like, I was out. going really easy with it, like trying not to break it. Oh, you thought the, the clamp was gonna break? Yeah. See, I told you it was like worried that it was gonna break. Do you need me to hold that while you pour it? Yeah. That's it? No, I just, they didn't line the lid up with the... Oh. The handle, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a pain. I just stuck the lid on there. That's probably good. All right, so we've got all the filters changed. Now we can put the fluids in, right? Yep. Whew. We're gonna oh, have to move that sliding. lid on that bucket because that's gonna be impossible. Yeah. Unless we dump into a small container. Yeah, we could do that. Maybe. It's a dark. All right, so we have our oil engine filler hole right here and the cap was orange. I thought it was orange. Where'd it go? Right here. Okay. So this orange cap is the cap that says oil on it. So we have our funnel going in there and you want to make sure not to fill it above the top line of the dipstick. Is that so how many quarts? Um oh wait no hold on one point one nine gallon. One point. Two gallons. No, one point one nine. So a gallon. And a quarter. Just less and, than a quarter. Yeah, and just less than a quarter. So we'll put this in, check it. Um, 
going down slow. So I was trying to do it when it was warmer out so it wouldn't be so slow. Is it dogs? All right, so the next one is a gear loop into the front axle. I'm not gonna put more until we start it though. Cause then you let it go in because it is so cold and so thick that it's just getting stuck and it's not going to the places it's supposed to be. And now the place it's not supposed to be is on the ground. And lastly, we have the hydraulic fluid, which is gonna go in the rear. Hydraulic transmission fluid. And Eric actually figured out he can use that hook to hold that filter, the funnel right there. So, and also another tip, when you buy a bucket, make sure to buy a bucket with a pour spout in the middle, like that. And not, <laughs> and not on the side, like this, because this is not going to be much fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, this went downhill this morning. I had to throw a ratchet strap over the top to keep it from blowing into my cabin. Um, the metal is shearing off on this. See right here, it's just completely snapped. Oh my gosh. I don't even know where that stack of chairs came from. I have no idea. That wasn't there before. My greenhouse is definitely sliding. Oh, good gravy. Yeah, that's a problem. Shoot. Well, I definitely didn't have the problem I thought I was gonna have, which was the anchors. The anchors are holding barely. You can see this one's getting ripped right up. Um, that is not good. at this point. 